it out, Rhino? Is this movie out? It's actually a re-release that just came out today. I feel like oh, I've heard this I before. Know. Oh, I can't think. Doom. Godzilla? Only because he made the. <laughs> he was give, he was trying to give me. <laughs> they re-released <laughs> Godzilla minus one, the new Godzilla movie. The one that all the fans liked. They re-released it in black and white today. Ooh. So I wonder how that will fare. I wonder if it will. It will be. I haven't seen it. I know nothing about Godzilla. I just love an underdog, and I appreciated the groundswell of folks coming out and being like, "Hey, this is actually a really good movie. You should go see it." And then folks were really jumping on the bandwagon and going, "You know what? It's surprisingly like really yeah, good." Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many movies this, in the last few months that seem to be overlooked for whatever reason, um, and yeah, I don't know if people just aren't. Like they're being a little more particular about what they get out to mm-hmm. see because money's tight or the weather sucks. Yeah. Or just because they're just not quite used to getting back in the theater, maybe not liking crowds or whatever. But yeah, I mean, that one really picked up some momentum. I'd like to see. I don't know if I'd want to see it in black and white. It's just strange. I know you would probably really enjoy that, Rhino. But I mean, I would. I would totally stream it if it ever came came on, just to see what the the fuss was sort of all about. But. Yeah, and that would totally feel like um, back when I was a kid on Saturday afternoons, the old Godzillas would be on, and they were all black and white. You know, so I think that'd be cool. That would be cool. All right, so you've gone and seen something since the last time we talked. What yeah. So your- sp- speaking of movies that kind of get overlooked or lost in the shuffle. Um, origin. This is a movie. The reason I really wanted to make an effort to see it um, is because the star is Mississippi's very own Anjanu Ellis Taylor. If her name is familiar, um, not only is she from Mississippi, but she was nominated for a supporting actress award for King Richard last year uh, or two years ago. Um, fantastic actress. And she is so good in this movie. I mean, just one of the best performances I've ever ever seen from her, but also just from any actress. So that, that says a lot. Um, she was just fantastic in this movie. So everybody's talking this week about how Barbie got snubbed for director and best actress. But I feel like she's the one that got snubbed, you know, and I don't really know. They got no Oscar nominations And I'm really not sure why, you know, there's so much behind the scenes as far as timing of the release and all that. So, you know, the other thing is there's so many good movies this year and so many good efforts. So, you know, not everybody can get nominated. But in my opinion, I don't understand why um, you've got poor things getting all this attention. And that was a movie that I. I just found it disgusting. I hated it. You know, I, everybody I can tell, I will tell them, don't go see it. And yet it's up for Best Picture. Emma Stone got nominated. So it's just funny how those kind of things work out. But back to origin, this movie is based on um, a real, it's based on a true story. Um, and it's about a, a writer who she is kind of not really looking. She's written one book. She won a Pulitzer Prize. Um, So she's had success, but she's kind of committed to her family. She's got an aging mother, um, and so she's kind of committed to not working as much so that she can help take care of her mother. And she loses suddenly her her husband and her mother, and so she finds herself, you know, all of a sudden she's got this time, and Mm -hmm. so she decides she's going to write another book. Um, And her whole thing is... Um, when the, um, you know, I guess it was like 2000, early 2012, 13, somewhere around that time, um, she was approached by someone asking her to delve into the topic of racism. Um, and she said, you know, her opinion was that it was such a big topic that she had no answers for And she doesn't like to write about anything she doesn't have answers for. And so that's kind of what started the ball ball rolling on her thinking about doing it. And then when she made the commitment to do this book, um, studying that topic, she went a little bit further. 
and traveled the world, asked questions, read books, um, and really decided that some of our issues weren't really racism. It was more about society and how um, some people are labeled as better than others, regardless of your skin color or whatever. And she went to several different countries um, and just kind of explored that, wrote a book, and it was a bestseller. Um, I think it was released around the presidential election of 2000. Terrible um, timing. Yes, yes. Um, and Trayvon Martin, um, you know, that was part of her inspiration to get out there and write this book. And, um, you know, just it, it was just fascinating. Um, and the way the movie is done, you get to see her journey but they also depict some of these events. Um, and at one second, you find yourself smiling, um, you know, because there's some cute moments. But then the next second, I'm sitting there bawling my eyes out, knowing that people lived through some of the things in um, not only our nation's history, but the world's history. Um, but it's very compelling to me. It almost parts of it even had like a documentary feel to it. But I just felt like, you know, we talk about serious topics and this movie kind of puts a face to that. And I thought it was like a really good movie to just kind of get your mind working and and educating yourself about, um, you know, how can we all be better? How, is it still out? Do you think it'll be streaming? Yeah, it's still out. I feel like it will be streaming um, soon, but right now it is not. So if you want to see it, you'll have to go in theaters. It was l- released last week, but it's widely released this week. So you should be able to find it anywhere. And that's Origin? Origin. And every time I saw the promo for this, as far as the movie poster, I thought it was like an alien movie. Uh, just the the image of her. Uh, in the name, but it's definitely not. It's the origin of this book is what that means. Gotcha. Or in the beginnings of some of the issues that our country faces today. So I thought it was very good. Um, but if you do want to stream um, Snoop Dogg, another Mississippian, uh, has a new, do- a new movie out this week called Underdogs. Um, and it is streaming on Amazon. If you... Loved the Bad News Bears, um, you know, those kind of movies, the little underdog, you know, teams that aren't really good but somehow triumph. Uh, that's kind of what this movie is, but I will tell you, it, I have not seen it, but it is rated R, and I've read and listened to several interviews with Snoop. And he has colorful it, language. It's the language, and a lot of people, um, I mean, they're, they're saying the kids in the movie are cussing. Now, Bad News Bears, they did that, too, you know, when I was a kid. So, to me, it's probably kind of the same for our, you mm-hmm. know, our time now. But Snoop has, like, he is such an impressive person. I know he's got a reputation, but you cannot argue that he is a great talent and um this movie is getting a kind of mixed reviews but i, I think if you like well, snoop kids dropping uh, f-bombs yeah. is probably gonna get you a mixed review. <laughs> that's true um but mike epps is in it snoop is actually in it playing the coach um he's a washed up football player uh he, he was a very successful football player but he has hit rock bottom and part of his punishment is he's got to, you know, have some community service on his resume. And so he decides he's going to coach this team. Um, so anyway, I think it'll be fun. It is produced by Kenya Barris, who produced Blackish and wrote Blackish. So if that's your kind of humor, you'll probably like it. You do hate, though, that because that will pause. I might would stream it, um, you know, whenever I get a chance to watch something fun and lighthearted alone. But he's so funny, like I'm with the kids. And I'm sure there's a good message wrapped into it being underdogs. You hate that the language barrier will keep me it will keep yeah, me right from showing it to my you know to my kids and you know i'm obviously no saint they've heard and sort of drops here and there it's like <laughs> you can overlook but if it's you know if it's just part of the color of the movie then it just why yeah i agree that you know so much of what we see nowadays has just unnecessary language and you know i did see where there's two movies um or I guess going on here, I'd have to look it up. But 
um, Al Pacino. I was going to say Al Capone. Mm. But Al Pacino and, um, oh, Medea. Um, oh, yeah, Tyler Perry. I think they're both on the Mississippi Gulf yeah. Coast, maybe. A Tyler was in Clarksdale. Okay, wrong direction. <laughs> and I'm like, if I had been walking through Clark- Clarksdale, well, first of all, I probably would have never thought, oh, I would have been like, do you know who you look yeah. like? Yeah. Yeah. Especially, he's got a, the pictures I've seen, he's got a wig on. So, yeah. lots of good movies coming out yeah. of Mississippi, too, and those to go see. So, thank you, Tanya. But you guys stick with us. We got more for you. At-